Hey Greg. Yeah? Aren't you going to do a video on CTR Nitro Fueled? Yeah, eventually. Well, what's the hold up? I've just been really busy recently. Doing what? Playing CTR Nitro Fueled. Hey everybody, Coach Max here, and welcome to the good, bad, and ugly of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. If you're familiar with the channel, you've probably already noticed that this is a very different format for the Good, Bad, and Ugly show. And it's because I felt kind of shoehorned in the other format, where I couldn't really talk about what I wanted to talk about in the videos. And I really think this format will allow me to make the videos a lot more fun and more interesting to watch. Hopefully. And that bit at the beginning of the video was not an over-exaggeration. I have been obsessed with Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled recently. I mentioned it in my CNK review, but it bears repeating. Crash Team Racing for PS1 is my all-time favorite game. Something about it just grabbed me more than Mario Kart did. And I didn't get Sonic R for PC until many years later. Although, we all know that game isn't much competition for CTR. And when I heard about CTR getting a remake back in December, well, I think it's safe to say that my reaction sounded a little something like this. <laughs> Booyah, Grandma! Booyah! And June 21st, 2019 saw the release of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled on every home console. I've always been more of a console guy than a PC Master Race person. And, well, I don't see Nitro Fueled on PC. So, checkmate. And guys, this is how you do a remake. Literally, almost everything in this game is perfect. There's only a small handful of things that lower the game's superstar status the smallest little bit. But if you're not familiar with CTR, you might not realize just how close to perfect this remake is, or why so many people are so crazy about it. In 1999, Naughty Dog, the company behind the original trilogy of Crash games, had reached a point where they didn't want to make a new Crash game. They wanted something new and fresh. So, they compromised with Sony. They made a new Crash game, but it wasn't your typical Crash game. It was the mascot racer to rival Mario Kart and Diddy Kong Racing. And boom! Just like that, one of the greatest racing games of all time was born. And, as if I haven't said it enough, it's amazing. Your kart control's a lot heavier than compared to other racers, and you're constantly rewarded for defying that heaviness while racing. Be that jumping from ramps, or getting huge hang time turbos, or power sliding. It feels good to control your kart in this game. And I was admittedly a little worried about this making the transition in the remake. I wasn't sure if anyone could match that tight control scheme, but Beanox did it. They almost perfectly recreated the controls from CTR, and in my opinion at least, they made it even better. This game feels so good to control. I can't even be bothered to look up synonyms for how to describe this game. It just works. Fantastically. The cart controls are just a little slipperier in this game, but it doesn't make the cart harder to control. Beanox hit that sweet spot where you're not as locked in on turns, and it really makes a lot of the courses even quicker to move through. And, being a racing game, you want to go fast. And speaking of fast, I can't help but feel like this game is way faster than any of the Crash Racing games. Well, at least CTR and CNK. There's tag team racing, but we all know that's not really a real Crash Racing game. <laughs> the boost mechanics are present in this game that were available in the original, and it might just be better in this game too. There's a boost reserve system where you don't just boost and get speed for a little bit. If you chain together your drift turbos and any extra speed boosts you get, you will move faster. That sounds like total common sense. Go fast and you'll keep going fast. But it makes a huge difference when you are consistently boosting than when you're not. And when you go over certain boost pads that give you ultra sacred fire, you feel unstoppable as unstoppable as you can feel without running into a wall in front of you anyways. All of the CTR tracks got a major facelift, and each and every track looks breathtaking. 
They even redesigned some of the tracks so that they fit in with the Crash universe now. Sewer Speedway was always kinda loosely based on the sewer levels from Crash 2, but now it's closely modeled after them, and even draw a little inspiration from the Crash 1 power plant levels. Mystery Caves has some dinosaurs from Crash 3. Ruse Tubes has the underwater enemies and ships from Crash 3 as well. It's fantastic. Oh, and there's not just the 18 tracks from CTR in this game. There's also all 13 tracks from Crash Nitro Kart in this game, completely remade as well. Beanox had no business doing this. CNK is a game that isn't widely as loved as CTR, but they knew that there's a big enough group of supporters that it warranted the idea of remaking. And I'm so glad they did. I'm appreciating the CNK tracks in ways that I never did originally. Inferno Island isn't just Crash Cove anymore. It's Crash Cove. At night! And the Oscar goes too. But seriously, Clockwork Wampa has become one of my favorite tracks in the game, including all of the CTR tracks. There's also a brand new track in the game, Retro Track, exclusive to the PS4. But it's not a brand new track, sadly. It's just Turbo Track with a PS1 skin on top of it. On the one hand, I like the extra effort that went into this, but you could have done this with any of the other tracks, and you picked Turbo Track? I love this course, but where's Retro Cortex Castle or Retro Ruse Tubes? There's not just all of the C and K tracks in the game, though. There's every character from that game, as well as all of the CTR characters, all in one package. One reason that this is huge is that, aside from Velo in his real form, you couldn't play as any of the boss characters from CNK. Except on the GBA version, but that was the GBA version. The bosses were brand new characters in that game, so it wasn't a huge deal, but after having the boss characters unlockable in CTR, it just didn't make sense. And there's not just all of these characters too, but also unique skins for every single character. And a lot of these are absolutely killer. Some of them are... bleh. In the time leading up to the release of the game, I was not very thrilled with a lot of these skins. Specifically the ones that look just like a recolor and not an actual skin. You know those costumes in Smash Brothers that look so out of place and no one ever uses them? That's the vibe I was getting. But, aside from this horrific blue Crash skin, and just a few others, the skins are really fun to use. And, just to brag a little bit, I unlocked the digital Entropy skin, which you get by beating all of Oxide's time trials, and that was an experience. I never was able to beat any of the time trials in the PS1 version of the game. If five-year-old Greg could see me now, he'd probably be disappointed. The adventure mode is largely unchanged. It's prettier and is just as much fun to play as it always was. There's even cute little cutscenes that take the place of the boss just sitting there talking to you. It adds so much more life into a game that was already full of it. While it's a little bit of a bummer that the CNK tracks have very little to do with the game other than being in the arcade mode, it's not too big of a deal with Adventure Mode having this one-to-one -one remake. There's even a difficulty adjuster for Adventure Mode, and I felt like a big shot when I got the game and put it on Hard Mode, only to get decimated by the computer. When they say hard, they aren't kidding. This is an amazing challenge for people that want it. I beat Adventure Mode on Hard, but once I did and got the trophy for it, I hopped out and went to a save file on Medium. I'm not going for the relics or the tokens in Hard right now, because I can only cry so much playing this game. The online is where I've been spending most of my time in this game. I never got to play any games in multiplayer modes growing up, aside from Thanksgiving and Christmas when my cousins and I would get together and I never touched the multiplayer in CTR. And the PS1 didn't make it any easier for you, almost requiring you to have that boomerang to play with more than two people. But the online is something to behold. It's still unbelievable to me that I can play CTR online. You can choose between the regular races or the battle mode online. Oh yeah, battle mode is back, and I've only heard great things about it. All of the CTR and CNK tracks are here, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. The waiting lobbies before the races sometimes have unusual effects on character models. And you get to see some interesting PSN usernames doing this. Come on, man, this is a family-friendly channel. Don't be like this guy. Don't make a username like this. 
But the online is where I see myself coming back to for years to come. There's just something about playing against real people that you don't get from racing computers. Sometimes my 20 year head start is really apparent with the races I'm in. It feels great to completely lap everyone in a race and be the only one to finish. But other times, there's people that destroy me online. I'm definitely not the greatest CTR player of all time, but I like to think that this is one of the games that I'm really good at. But there's some people, man, I don't know how they're this good. It really makes me want to get incredibly good at the online, because I love this challenge. Unfortunately, this game isn't perfect, and it has to deal with the hopping. Hopping is vital to racing as best as you can, but there's some tracks, like the shortcut in Sewer Speedway, where hopping is off just enough where you're gonna faceplant into this wall more than you'd like. And the relic race in Coco Park was a pain to get. I kept barely getting enough speed to hit these boxes here, but then I would constantly hop over other boxes and other tracks. Very temperamental. But let's be real, if that's the worst there is in CTR Nitro Fueled, then man, this is a good game. I don't care if you have extreme nostalgia for CTR, or you never even knew it existed. This is one of the greatest games that you can currently buy on the market. The big question I always get asked is, how similar is it to Mario Kart? And I could try to sound like a jerk and come up with some scholarly answer to that question, but I just can't. It's like Mario Kart in that it has wheels, but you can't put into words how different it is without playing it for yourself. You need this game. Oh boy, you need this game. And when you're playing online and see yourself beaten by Shiba Skin Fake Crash in a charcoal standard cart, then you'll know that Coach Max gave you a well-deserved whoopin'. Unless if you beat me. In which case, we all know that you just got really lucky with the items and I got constantly hit with items, and it was really just unfair. Thank you so much for checking out the channel today. I've got a video on Crash Nitro Kart that you might be interested in, as well as other videos. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch at CoachMax19, and I've been streaming CTR online pretty constantly the past two weeks, and with the Grand Prix happening right now, you can bet that I'll be playing it online a whole lot. It's always a great time over on Twitch. See you later!